Καλησπέρα κυρίε και κύριοι. Χριστό Ανέστη και χρόνια πολλά. Είμαι πάρα πολύ χαρούμενη που ξαναρχίζουμε ύστερα από λίγο καιρό πάλι τι εκπομπέ μα με ενδιαφέροντα θέματα, με ωραίου ανθρώπου και ενδιαφέρουσε προσωπικότητε. Υπήρξε ένα διάστημα ε, δυσκολία μεταξύ διαφόρων δουλειών, εργασιών, οπότε ήταν δύσκολα τα γυρίσματά μα. Είμαστε και πάλι μαζί σα. Ευχαριστούμε πάρα πολύ όσοι μα υποστηρίξατε και ήθελα να το πω αυτό γιατί βλέπω πάρα πολλού ανθρώπου που συναντώ σε δημοσίου χώρου, σε κάποιε εκδηλώσει στην Εκκλησία και χαίρομαι ότι τελικά τι εκπομπέ μα τι παρακολουθούν πολύ περισσότεροι άνθρωποι από ό,τι πιστεύαμε και χαιρόμαστε που έχει τόσο μεγάλη επίχυση σε εσά. Και θέλω να πω ευχαριστώ σε κάποιου ανθρώπου επί τη ευκαιρία, πριν ξεκινήσω με τον καλεσμένο μου. Πρώτον, υπάρχουν φίλοι πιστοί εδώ και μήνε που μα βοηθούν και προωθούν τι εκπομπέ μα και ιδιαίτερα θα πω ευχαριστώ. Στο Γιώργο Χατζιπατέρα που πάντα προωθεί τις εκπομπές μας στην ε, Ένωση Ελλήνων Επιστημόνων και στον πολύ καλό μου φίλο τον Μιχάλη τον Αράπη που είναι δικηγόρος και αυτό στο Κάρντιφ προωθεί πάρα πολύ τις εκπομπές μας και τη γνωστοποιεί σε άλλους γιατρούς και φίλους και πραγματικά σας ευχαριστούμε που ξεκινήσαμε μια προσπάθεια ερασιτεχνική χωρίς να είμαστε άνθρωποι της τηλεόρασης και τελικά εξελίσσεται σε μια όμορφη εκπομπή και σε μια ε, ενημέρωση με ιδιαίτερα θέματα. Επίσης, να ευχαριστήσω τον Αφανή μας ήρωα, που είναι πάντα πίσω από την κάμερα, τον μάνατζέρ μας, τον κύριο Λίγκο, που πάντα προσαρμόζει το πρόγραμμα. Στο τρελό μου πρόγραμμα εργασίας, στις μέρες, στις ώρες, πάντα βρίσκει τον τρόπο να μας καλύπτει και τον ευχαριστούμε για όσα κάνει. Και αφού ευχαρίστησα όλους αυτούς τους ανθρώπους που είναι πολύ σπουδαίοι για μένα, ε, να καλωσορίσω τον καλεσμένο μου που είναι ένα συνάδελφό μου. Κάνουμε μαζί ιατρία καρδιολογία και είναι ο Dr. Francesco Lomonaco. You're not from Monaco. Good evening. No, I <laughs> wish I was. <laughs> I <laughs> wish I was. Ο Dr. Lomonaco, όπω καταλαβαίνετε, η συζήτηση ήταν στα αγγλικά. I say that we will speak in English tonight. Yes, yes, also because I don't understand. Uh, let me tell them quickly what we were going to talk about and then we will start our discussion, which will be extremely interesting. Um, ο Dr. Lomonaco είναι Ιταλός. Θα κάνουμε τη συζήτησή μας στα αγγλικά και θα μας μιλήσει για ένα θέμα του μέλλοντος, κυριολεκτικά. Cardiac regeneration, stem cells in treatment of heart attack and heart failure. Θα μας μιλήσει δηλαδή για τα stem cells που μπορούν ουσιαστικά να αντικαταστήσουν στο μέλλον εγχειρήσεις bypass, stents, ε, προσπάθεια ανάπλασης αγγείων, ε, αναγέννηση της καρδιάς, πραγματικά ιατρική του μέλλοντος, βιοτεχνολογία που είναι πολύ μπροστά και επειδή ο ίδιος μόνο στην Αμερική την έχει παρουσιάσει αυτή, σήμερα θα μας μιλήσει συγκεκριμένα για την έρευνά του. So, welcome, my posh and prestigious doctor. Thank you very much for uh, your kind presentation. Uh, Dr. Lamonaco was born in Italy and he graduated in Italy as well, where he trained as a cardiologist. Then he moved in US and in the beautiful New York, he did research related to stem cells and he presented his research there. And he will tell us all about it today, which is absolutely amazing. He was telling me all the way to the studio about it. And um, he settled in the UK the last six years. We worked together, I said earlier, and we see a lot of interesting cases Indeed. of cardiology. We work two days per week together. So we are listening to you and to your really exciting presentation. Looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming all. tonight. I know it's difficult lately for all of us to meet <laughs> outside work, I mean. Yes. <laughs> Thank right. you very much, first of all, for having me here and um, hi to all the uh, people who are watching us, listening to us. I'm very uh, honored to be here tonight and trying to present also the fruits of my research. Mm -hmm. uh, as you rightly said, I'm a cardiologist. I work here at West Middlesex Hospital in London. I graduated in Italy, where I also specialized. Mm -hmm. Then I went to the United States in New York, where I did research on cardiac stem cells. And um, basically, I presented the results of this research, uh, also at the American Heart Association meeting in New Orleans. Um, basically, the aim of this research is the fact that so far, the only treatment for heart problems uh, like is only bypass or stents. Correct. So basically, if there is a narrowing in the arteries, okay. uh, which is the cause of the heart attack, nowadays, the only uh, way that we have to treat it is to do a bypass so to take another arteries from another part of the body and a basically a graft and being able to bypass or to put a stent so with a balloon 
to put this tent and uh, eliminating the narrowing. Um, the point is that are also invasive procedures which requires always, uh, uh, they can have complications and many other problems. But uh, thanks to the stem cells, these problems actually, hopefully in the future, we, many patients will not need bypass and stents as they need now. Great. Basically, just only to uh, briefly do an introduction, mm -hmm. What is the stem cells? Basically, every one of us, every organ is made of uh, uh, cells, which are like small uh, bricks, basically, which make the wall, which is basically the structure of every organ. So a stem cells is the original cell, which is able to uh, replicate, multiplicate uh, uh, 100, 100,000, 1 million times, and make every one of them these little bricks of the wall forming the organs. Now, the idea of the uh, cardiac stem cells is that so far we thought that the heart that we had, like when we were like 20, was the same heart that we had when we were 80. But actually, professor, professor Anversa, mm -hmm. the one I studied in America, he realized that looking at the heart under the microscope, he noticed that some cells of the heart were dying. So he thought, if the cells of the heart are dying, it means that in a few years, we, there wouldn't be any heart anymore. So he thought there must be some cells inside the heart who multiplicate, replicate, and go to replace the old cells. So the heart, of course, keeps growing and doesn't disappear like organ. And the same is applied to other organs. So when he thought, he said this initially to the international community, they thought it was a bit crazy that these things cannot exist. But actually he found these uh, cardiac stem cells and uh, basically when I went to the United States I went into the right moment in which his team was working on uh, making on uh, identifying these cells and making them uh, uh, replicate and uh, proliferate and basically what uh, uh, then we did uh, we did uh, studies uh, because any study that is done on the human being first it first must be done on the animals, on little animals, because yeah, they definitely. need, of course, to, uh, to do experimentation on this. So uh, they did uh, um, some experiments uh, before in little animals like mice, like also uh, larger animals, mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, on human beings. So what he, he did initially, he, 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 he used them on little mice, and he noticed that these cells were able to recreate again uh, little uh, arteries. And uh, so was an experimental model in rats in which he had the, um, in the heart, he closed one of the artery, mm -hmm. uh, that is the LAD, is one of the main arteries of the heart, and caused a little, a little small infarction in the heart of the mice. And then he injected these stem cells inside the heart and basically he started seeing a lot of green areas which were populating all around the area of the myocardial infarction. Mm -hmm. So it was a site of injection of these EGFP positive cells. And then he, no he noticed that they started forming uh, after two weeks uh, some little coronary arteries that were basically these round structures. And then he used a, a model and he found after two weeks these uh, big arteries that were formed, coronary arteries, 183 micrometers, 42 micrometers. And, uh, and he noticed also that these arteries started forming little connections mm -hmm. between uh, basically uh, uh, the arteries themselves. So they were slowly, slowly, the coronary arteries are like a tree and a branch. So basically notice that these little branches started connecting uh, to the other branches of this tree and they were forming slowly, slowly this uh, very intricate mechanism of coronary artery branches bringing so the blood flow to the areas where the myocardial infarction was formed. So basically he found out that this um, uh, the cardiac progenitor cells were able to regenerate conductive and intermediate signs, the small coronary arteries, together with the small capillaries. May I ask you, was that collateral, literally? They were forming collateral? 
Exactly. So ah. basically, because when he formed a heart attack, uh, there was this narrowing, the mm. blood couldn't pass through this artery that was closed, and then these arteries started forming. It's like, let's imagine, a highway which is blocked completely by mm -hmm, cars, mm -hmm. so they, they, there is no, nothing that can go through. Yeah. Imagine that every little car is like a little red cell, and it cannot go through the highway. And then the cells will form some collateral streets, which will bring the blood again uh, back there. Mm -hmm. So he's able to bring again blood to the area which is... Um, so this was actually a revolutionary uh, way to show that actually the cardiac stem cells were able to um, replicate and proliferate. May I ask you something? He said Definitely. he has chosen LAD. I think from what we have seen, you have seen more than me because you're a cardiologist. M most times the artery we intervene is LAD, left anterior descending. Did he choose that artery accidentally or intentionally because it's a, a most suffering artery? I just have this question from your presentation. Maybe it sounds funny. Yeah, no, basically because, of course, being the main artery mm -hmm. is the one which can cause, closing it, the mm. little more damage. So it can show more the beneficial effect right. of a revascularization. Right. While if it was chosen a smaller branch, then we couldn't have appreciate the same effect right. of revascularization. He, he wouldn't choose PDA, but he would choose circumflex, right, coronary yeah. artery? Yeah, probably. Uh, just, you know, question, yeah, why yeah, did he choose yeah. that one? But it makes sense, as you said, because yeah. it would cause less harm, yeah. possibly. Yes. Yes. All right, yeah, wonderful. Yes, Very and then basically, uh, thank you, basically this is uh, another, um, shows uh, the uh, another epicardial coronary artery mm -hmm. of a human being. And then what okay. happened? He noticed that there were these cells uh, called the CKIT and KDR. These cells were identified for the first time in the world because these cells are progenitor cells of the cells of the heart. And these are resident cardiac stem cells inside the heart of the humans, which okay. before was not thought that they existed. So for the first time, were identified in 2009. Mm -hmm. But 2009. the point is that even though we identified it, we couldn't tra uh, transplant in the hearts of human beings. So basically, we were using just only, we, we were using some, um, there were some animals, larger animals, mm -hmm. with which we thought we closed slightly coronary artery without causing too much, of course, discomfort, any damage, any pain, any suffering, of course, okay. uh, to the larger animals, just only to show that this could be done also on the, on the, um, on the humans. Correct. And basically, we closed, in, in, we did this in dogs, we closed this artery LAD. surgically, the LAD. We closed this surgically, and basically what happened, we did also an angiogram. I did this angiogram in which showed the LAD, the circumflex angiogram and the hemodynamics. Mm -hmm. And then, as you can see here, these, cell, these um, uh, are all all basically the arteries, large conductive, mm -hmm. basically coronary arteries that were formed inside basically the arteries of the dogs. Okay. As you can see here, there is a little image of the dog mm -hmm. in which you can see uh, that there is this occluder causing the tiny uh, heart attack. And then basically the blood flow show here in the green and the blue, as you can see, the blue is much improved distally to the occlusion. So this means that many arteries had formed collaterals and so the blood was forming after the occlusion of the artery. So this shows clearly how also in this functional improvement of ischemic segments, the first one is the contraction of the heart, which is not great, is not very wide. Mm -hmm. The one down uh, after four weeks shows that is much bigger. So this means that even though in the heart there was a small heart attack, however, there were still cells which were viable, alive. So once the arteries were formed and we bring blood and oxygen to these areas of the heart which are not moving well, the blood and the oxygen will make these cells alive again. Because these cells are not all completely dead. There are some cells still alive mm -hmm. that thanks to the new oxygen and blood brought by the new arteries, basically we're able to restore again the capacity to contract again like before. Okay. So this was actually a revolutionary treatment. 
So this means that as final conclusion, the human heart possesses an coronary vascular progenitor cells which can be isolated, expanded in vitro for subsequent autologous transplantations in patients with coronary artery disease. So we make them in the lab and we take them and we inject them in the artery. Exactly. Do we, we do that them. somewhere in US only? Okay, exactly. Now, this okay. is the point. Because that that's, that's really too and much this ahead. Is revolutionary, actually. Indeed. But the point is that when I presented these studies in, uh, in New Orleans, uh, of course, this created a bit of uh, disbelief. This yeah, is definitely. not possible. It must be only cited, maybe. Uh, altered results or maybe only in the animals and then not translating the human beings. Mm -hmm. uh, but because I was there, part of the studies, I did all the hemodynamics, I saw with my own eyes, uh, and because it was done in larger animal, which was very similar, because the heart of the dogs, of the pigs, is basically virtually identical. Two hours. Identical to the heart of the human being, mm -hmm. virtually basically identical, is the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this should work also in the human beings. And then what happened? The uh, government of the United States believed in this research and gave to Professor Ambersa uh, basically this uh, um, uh, money to do a research on, uh, on basically humans, so on, uh, on people. Uh, basically, we did this uh, trial, which is called the Scipio trial, uh, only phase one, mm -hmm. just only to start, because then we needed uh, uh, some results uh, in, a, in a shorter, in a uh, smaller group, mm -hmm. in order then, if the results were encouraging, of course, then the government would have given more money for the phase two. Correct. What does Scipio stand for? It sounds Italian as well. <laughs> yes, he's uh, it was invented by Italian. He's basic cells in patients with ischemic cardiomyopathy, is a All sort right. of acronym. Ah, with cardiomyopathy? Yeah, okay. ischemic cardiomyopathy. Mm. Basically, ah, ischemic cardiomyopathy, yeah, that's fine. Basically, what they did, uh, we, we did this phase one for the treatment of heart failure and ischemic heart disease. Yeah. Basically, what happened? There were some patients uh, who, before uh, a bypass, were hit by a heart attack. The heart attack caused the death of many cells, so the function of the heart was very poor. Okay. It's like the heart is a pump, which doesn't pump well, so when it's been hit by a heart attack, start pumping less and less, and the capacity to pump is called ejection fraction. Ejection fraction normal is from 55% above. Less than 55% of ejection fraction, so remember this 55%, it means that the heart is not pumping well. Mm. So they chose, uh, as a subject to study, people who have been hit by a heart attack and they, they a dysfunction in the ability to pump, which was about uh, less than 40%. Okay. Uh, these people were going to have a bypass, but then what they did, they chose uh, two different groups of people. In some people, they injected uh, these... Uh, a cardiac progenitor stem cells, mm -hmm. and other people, they did not inject to see what would have been the result. Okay. And the result is that basically um, the uh, final findings of these studies uh, is that in 14 people in which these cardiac stem cells were uh, injected, the ejection fraction increased from 30% to 238%. Okay. By contrast, in the other ones in which they didn't inject the cells, the ejection fraction remained the same, 30%. But the main effect was seen after one year, in which the ejection fraction increased by 12%, so mm -hmm. from 30 to 42%. Now, right. it's incredible how in heart problems, even 12% of ejection fraction is very important because it results Definitely. in a better quality of life of the patient, less shortness of breath, by especially less risk of uh, a malignant rhythm of the heart, because the lower is the ejection fraction, mm. the more malignant Malignous. rhythm there are. So already improving of 12%, this means in the long term, in incredible uh, um, increase in survival rate and reduced death after the surgery. 
And let's also mention that the pumping function of the heart is important because it supplies Definitely. the main organs and tissues with blood and oxygen. So it's not only important about the heart, we're talking about the whole body. Absolutely. Being in a very good... Uh, Absolutely. It's the engine of the of body. Of course, of course. So everything has a positive effect from the brain, from the kidneys, where better perfused the brain. Definitely. And uh, better quality of life, of course. And... Uh, so, without doing anything else, with, with medical management, I suppose 12% increase within a year? Yes, 12% that's, that's increase. That's important. Compared to the people who didn't have uh, the stem cells. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, so, basically, this is uh, a problem in the coronary arteries. Mm -hmm. um, but now, there are also studies which are undergoing there on the progenitor cells of the muscles, or the cells which form the muscles, not only the coronary arteries. And these are new uh, studies which have been, uh, actually, uh, uh, then I left, because they were going to study also this, but then I left uh, and they decided to come to England mm -hmm. and uh, start working clinically, basically. Can I ask you, these stem cells, were, would, would they only be injected in the arteries or could we also produce stem cells which could be injected in the muscle, the myocardium? Yes, okay, so, so far they've been injected uh, through, the corona, corona, through the angiogram, mm -hmm. through the, uh, uh, of course, arterial uh, So route. it goes through the wire? Yeah, 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 through okay. it, you do the angiogram and then you inject them. Uh, now, there is also a new device which they are studying, which has a little... Uh, um, basically that it goes inside the artery and then slightly slightly go in the media without causing rupture of the artery and then is able to penetrate in the muscle but still I remember also when I was there they were trying to study this new uh, catheter uh, but still um, I don't think that they, they, they manage so so far is mainly the injection through the um, uh, arterial route basically so far okay. That's really impressive. Actually, that's medicine of the future. It's, it's very much ahead from what we, uh, we know and what our routine is. And you can imagine the cost effectiveness when you have bypass surgeries, rehabilitation, uh, complications, stents, all the costs and the complications and the delay in recovery. When you can do that, obviously the cost will be significant initially as well. But regarding the quality of life, I, I imagine people will feel healthier or Definitely. as if nothing major has happened to their heart. Definitely. But if you think about uh, um, this is the, the, what is the future will be medicine, will be regenerative medicine. So mm -hmm. this will be applied in the future not only to the heart, but to the kidneys, to the brain, uh, to the lungs, in which in, uh, let's say, hypothetically uh, 160, 70, 100 years, there will be the possibility to regenerate uh, new the organs. Organ. So we will have like a sort of uh, um, um, deposit in which there will be the ability with the stem cells to recreate all our organs. So this is not, this seems to be now completely uh, not scientific, something really in the future we see only in the movie. But actually, this is what will be the future of medicine. And also another future of the medicine is bioengineering. Mm. Basically, what we have nowadays, uh, our, we are, who we are is defined by the DNA. DNA is made of genes. And the genes, they are the ones who produce the little proteins, uh, le the little things who we are, basically. Now, many diseases are due to lack of a protein, lack of something. So, uh, and now still is done in certain diseases, mm -hmm. we can manipulate the DNA in certain new gene and make maybe um, some organs to produce certain proteins uh, which will allow to uh, eliminate certain diseases due okay. to a lack and deficiency of a certain uh, protein, a certain channel, for example. So this is definitely uh, the future of medicine where uh, we are going through because Medicine, imagine, in the last uh, 60 years has made more progress than in the last 2,000 years. So let's imagine, in the last 60 years, more progress than in the last 2,000 years. So things that uh, 60 years ago seemed to be impossible, like yeah. the stem cells, now they are reality. That's why when we uh, think about the future of medicine, we should think with optimism and with possibility that this will really happen. Yeah. Because we need to be daring, we need to be 
to imagine big, to think big in order to achieve things, especially mm -hmm. medicine. But we have the technology nowadays which makes things easier and you can't do things. Even if you have an idea, you can really work on that. Previously, we didn't have the means Definitely. to, to work and to research. We didn't have the foundings, we didn't have the labs, we didn't have the money, we didn't have the support, we didn't have the people who would volunteer to work for years through Definitely. a trial. Definitely. Nowadays, people invest more, more on that and research is ongoing. And what is impressive, I think that's what we are lucky because we come from the western part of Europe, both of us. UK and across the Atlantic, US, they're very much ahead because they invest a lot of money Definitely. in research. Definitely, absolutely. They, I they agree. don't um, worry about the cost as long as they know that will lead them to a significant outcome and they believe and they invest on that. And they have the means to do that. That's the truth. Absolutely. Um, about bioengineering, do you have any updates to, to tell us? Well, let's say it's a very specific field. Sometimes mm. I read about different uh, studies that have been done and they've been the way they, but it's mainly due to diseases with lack of certain proteins, uh, mm -hmm. uh, lack of certain channels, which they can basically completely modify the DNA. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, it's a very specific field. I don't have, uh, sometimes I read in certain updates uh, but what is important to know is that now we know all the human genome basically has been a, a titanic uh, uh, really challenge, but we managed now to know every little gene that is in our body. And this means that w once you know how something is done, then you can modify and you can use for therapeutic purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, also, let's imagine now the new micro nanotechnology also. Nanotechnology is a technology in which you can even go to deliver, for example, the main problem of the chemotherapy agents so far is that they go and destroy the normal tissue and the tissue mm. with cancer. Yeah. Now they have this nanotechnology that are little spheres which bring the, anti the, the chemotherapy only to the area of the cancer, avoiding the healthy tissue surrounding the necrotic, the, the, the cancerous tissue to be damaged. Mm -hmm. So between cardiac stem cells, regenerative medicine, bioengineering, nanotechnology, transporting also antibiotics, chemotherapy agents directed to the area, we will be able to defeat many mm -hmm. diseases that uh, so far they've been considered, of course, with no treatment, with no cure. So I'm very hopeful that uh, the synergy between medicine and uh, bioengineer and um, all the new uh, technology because uh, medicine has been able to do these uh, uh, progresses, like you say, thanks to research of mm -hmm. scientists, of mm -hmm. doctors, but also thanks to the help of the engineers we, who create uh, all these uh, technological things, which basically are synergistic together with the, the expertise of the scientists in order then to uh, know first how is the mechanism of a disease. Once you know how is the mechanism of the disease, you know in which areas of the disease or of that area go and uh, modify it in order to have a positive outcome. Yeah, it's, it's also very good what you said regarding the chemotherapeutic agents, for instance. Of course, they can't be selective. They go and destroy both yes. cancerous and yeah. healthy tissue. It's amazing if they achieve to make a selective treatment so we save the, the healthy tissue. And it's something similar which is going to happen here, I suppose. Exactly. And what I wanted to ask you is because obviously stem cells, we work extraordinarily avoiding bypass surgery, stents, drug eluting stents very likely. Um, how is that going to work in heart failure? Well, in heart failure basically what is failing is mainly the muscles, the, the cell mm. which form the muscles. Now because we have identified also the um, progenitor cells or the muscle, smooth muscle cells, then they will be able to uh, uh, replace some uh, uh, basically a, a, um, cells which have died. 
this is though i have to be honest still in theory so All they right. are still doing it because it's not more um, let's say clear the results like in the cardium because they've not been able to deliver the cells directly into the muscles so yeah. they have to find also the delivery system but i'm very confident we will get there Definitely. so it's only a matter in uh, in medicine always like in everything in life to always being never give up always continue always challenge ourselves and uh, at the end we will be able to solve any 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 problem and issue definitely you said the key word it's smooth muscle so uh, how it would be extremely difficult not extremely challenging for, for the bioengineers to produce cells for a smooth muscle rather than um you know any any other kind of arteries, cells, structures or layers of the artery, maybe it would be easier to produce, but selective for muscles. It's a bit more difficult. There's been the... Be difficult to imagine indeed. It's been found, the myocardial progenitor says that the smooth muscle cell. The point is that once, first of all, the delivery system has been found mm -hmm. and also how to attract the, and being able to replicate in the tissue. So, but I'm sure that we will get there. No, definitely. Definitely. All right. What else do you have to tell us? Well, basically that I, everything I told you now uh, is important also in medicine. That's very important for many people listen to us that before everything becomes available as a treatment, mm -hmm. um, it takes time because as you can see here, this research it's taken like 15 years from the mice, then the dogs, then the, the human being before the first study, then there will be the second and everything. Because first of all, the most important thing is the safety of every treatment. Of we have to make sure that it works before being spread in the community. Even the same for a medication, for example. Before a me medicine that we normally take, it goes into the market, it takes 15 years and only one medication out to 10,000 Mm -hmm. makes it. So what I'm going to say is this, that uh, many people who have a lot of diseases, a lot of problems, they look, of course, with a lot of hope to the research. But it's important also never to fall in the hands Definitely. of some doctors or some people who promise to have the miracle. Because some doctors, unfortunately, they exploit, they take advantage mm. of, the, of the pain, of the sorrow, of the, of the sickness of some patients who will do everything. Uh, I imagine, for example, people who suffer from uh, um, some lesion in the bone marrow, in the spine, and then they are in the wheelchair. And unfortunately, I've heard uh, also in Italy or other, some that they say, oh, don't worry, I will be able to make you walk again. So they spoil this. So I always tell the people listen to us, so unfortunately, they suffer from neurological diseases or everything, mm. that uh, to be hopeful that we, all the research, the scientists are working in order for you to give you a, again what is the most important thing that we have, which is the health, but also never to fall in the hands of some people who promise miracles. Because also the study I told you now is very promising, of course, very mm -hmm. promising, mm -hmm. but which will hopefully has been shown to work already in some patients. But I don't want that this creates too many uh, hopes and uh, fake hopes, maybe to some people who are waiting for this. Just want to say it's very, it's very promising, mm -hmm. but still it takes time in medicine for citing medication or a treatment before it's finally widely available mm -hmm. to all the population. How were you following up these patients or initially with the animals? You were injecting the stem cells. How were, which methods were you using or imaging to see the, the, the results of your grafts or your implantation? Yeah, basically um, is used uh, the histology. Basically what we did, we were injecting a certain uh, growth factors uh, which were uh, carrying a protein, a fluorescent protein. Mm -hmm. So basically we knew once injected, if they were all, uh, all green, we know that these were new 
new cells which were forming. Fluorescence. Fluorescence. So with the fluorescence, we're able to track that cells because once you inject the cells, you say, how do we know where these cells went? But right. if they carry a protein which uh, express a green color, you know that when you see the green, there will be new cells which have been formed. Mm. Did you use um, MRIs to see the arteries after that on the overall or the muscle? I mean, MRI for the, it's not for the, it's not histology. histology. MRI wouldn't show vessels, only muscle maybe. Histology. Histology only. Histology. All right. Okay. That was very interesting. Yeah, I say, because it's, it's also um, the future. Very new, yes. Part present, but also very near future. Mm. I, I personally didn't know anything about that. I know you told me we'll speak about um, stem cells and uh, biotechnology and bioengineering and the future medicine. I was thinking, what are we going to talk about? But <laughs> uh, that was not something I was expecting. Well, uh, we, if, whatever else you want to say, and then we will close our presentation for tonight. Yeah, I think that um, I hope I summarized uh, everything, all my thought, all mm -hmm. the research, and also what is the new direction that medicine is going to. I think that um, uh, hopefully I was able to have a very concise and clear mm -hmm. and to give a clear message because it's important sometimes no quantity but quality and the uh, uh, clarity with which a message is transmitted. So I really hope that I was able, because it's not always easy to transmit maybe a scientific thing, maybe using certain words to maybe a population who, of course, is not in the medical field. That's why it's very important and I, I hope uh, I manage to explain also in simple term and um, uh, the message was received. Definitely. And one last question. Do we have any center in UK where we do a similar research or is it only resumed in US? Basically, here in London, there is St. George's who are oh, using different uh, uh, stem cells, uh, pr but uh, taken from the bone marrow because the stem cells right. I'm talking about are taken directly from the heart mm -hmm. while they're studying others uh, from the bone marrow basically the person are able then to differentiate so uh, let's say that there are all efforts coordinated towards the same aim the source only changes if it's direct into the heart because these cells into the heart has been found only by the group in America and of course they don't uh, want to disclose because they have the sort of exclusivity mm -hmm. of their uh, research. When babies are born and they say it's better if you go to a bank and save stem cells for uh, 10 years or 20 years um, or from the umbilical cord, yes. um, would that contribute to the future research? And one of the reasons they ask to do that is to use these, those stem cells for a similar bioengineering, or it, all these stem cells come from the bone marrow? Yeah, no, it's more for the bone, bone marrow, marrow, because of course also with the embryonic stem cells, there, there are also a lot of moral issues with the Bioethics. Catholic Church, especially, right. because they, there is, of course, involved the embryos or everything. Why? So this is especially in the, I am Italian, in Italy, it wouldn't be possible this because you know creates some moral issues right. related to the fetus the embryo but this is more cardiac so it's adult so there is no moral okay. implication all right okay thank you very much Welcome. i'm very thank grateful because we had a really unique discussion i mean who can come across these kind of subjects and one of the aim we have here in this program is to present things which you know, they're not so common. We discuss about common things, but we want to be a step forward and give new information, Definitely. things that you can't read or find on the net or you don't really discuss everywhere. Some unique things. It was a unique presentation and thank you very much. I'm very thank grateful for that. Thank you to for you for that. giving me this opportunity. It was an honor to have you here and tell us all these wonderful things. Ευχαριστούμε και εσάς που ήσασταν μαζί μας απόψε. Ελπίζουμε να βρήκατε εξίσου ενδιαφέρουσα την εκπομπή, γιατί ακούμε πράγματα τα οποία δεν γνωρίζουμε και είναι εξειδικευμένη γνώση, αλλά και ενδιαφέρουσα και είναι και η ιατρική του μέλλοντος. Τουλάχιστον έχουμε να ελπίζουμε. Ραντεβού την επόμενη εβδομάδα με ένα θέμα πολύ προκλητικό. Ήταν πρόκληση για μένα, το βρήκα εξαιρετικά ενδιαφέρον και ελπίζω να το βρείτε και εσείς το ίδιο. Καλό βράδυ, καλή εβδομάδα.